your devices work? Are they even worth your time? Stay tuned, we're gonna dig deeper into this topic. And no matter what your plastic surgeon or your dermatologist says, I've got some words for them. That's coming up next. Welcome back, Christine Beyer here, licensed esthetician for 22 years. On this channel, we talk about your skincare journey because it's never one thing that makes your face look better, it's a whole combination of things. So if you've followed me in my journey, you know I've been through a lot with my face and I have done a lot to my face. As of right now, I have no fillers, I do have Botox. I had a facelift in March of 2021 because I had done so much. I had uh, I had done my neck a thousand times. Now, my anatomy was such that I had no chin. And I think those of us who have very small chins have a tendency to age more poorly than those who have very strong jawlines. So if you look at YouTubers, who have strong jawlines like Angie from Hot and Flashy. She has a very strong jawline. She's got a little bit going on down here, but she's done some heat treatments to snap that back up. Now, not all of us are that lucky to have that projected jawline. I actually got a little bit of a chin implant and I am starting to see that it's sagging again. The facelift is not the end all be all. I wanted to let people know that because I've been hearing a lot on YouTube how devices don't work and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, but what are you gonna do? Are you just gonna let yourself age completely and do nothing for the quality of your skin until you need a facelift that's it you're just gonna give up and and after the facelift you still have to take care of your skin and if you have crappy skin and get a facelift you're just gonna have the same crappy skin pulled up tighter let's be real here we want it all there's no doubt we want healthy beautiful looking skin it just depends on how much we're going to do for it right and then it's a combination of things so I'm gonna start off here LED in your anti-aging arsenal, there's a couple of basics, right? LED, what does LED do? Oxygenates the skin, it speeds up cellular turnover. Some colors will kill off bacteria responsible for causing acne. It is a beautiful anti-ager. Is it overnight? No. Does it plump the skin a little bit right away? Sure. So I think this is, should be part of your routine. This is uh, my own device and I like LEDs that sit flat against the skin so all the energy can go straight into the skin and not escape. I like LED units that uh, tend to be the, the diodes are packed tightly together so you get more energy going straight into the skin instead of the ones that are spaced apart. I don't, you're not getting optimal energy into your skin. I know the panels and face masks and stuff are great, but they're hard to travel with. They start to break because they're usually made of some sort of paper, essentially, that is reinforced. And then over time, those start to crack. And it drives me crazy because I have had $1,800 LED that, that happened the first time and they were kind enough to replace it. And then my husband borrowed it and I think he did it too hard. And it's rubberized now, but it, even then it's starting to like get a fold and it's just irritating so I mean they're better than the big units that people have like the doctor's units that are like gigantor I mean they're more portable but I don't know there's always a trade-off between LEDs this is very easy to travel with this is about three minutes each spot three to eight minutes depending on how much you want to you really need to wake up your skin LED is a favorite for anti-aging and microcurrent and that's what I'm gonna do next yeah so I wanted to name this video the truth about devices because the truth about devices is they make your skin look better than doing nothing and I'm not really understanding the point that I'm seeing like that Dr. Kareem oh he's so hot and everything and he does amazing work but I'm sorry I'm an esthetician I was gonna work on my skin and all my clients and do my damnedest to make them look better even if they're in their 30s and I don't know very many people in their 30s that need facelifts they don't and so we're supposed to just neglect our faces until it's time for a facelift because that's the only thing that works no it's ludicrous. It's it's ridiculous to think that we're just all going to abandon our devices. No. <laughs> I couldn't like put words to it when I first started seeing his point. I get it. Yeah. After a point, yeah, you do need that. I mean, I finally gave in. I had been complaining about my, my neck since my late 30s and I'd had laser and all sorts of stuff. I did fibroblast and fibroblast was the thing that made my neck look the best. 
but the truth was I had fat deposits down here and a very tiny chin and it just not working with the optimal anatomy so I looked good my skin looked fantastic but I wasn't happy and I think me allowing myself to do that and I got flack I still get flack and people are like oh 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 the clutching pearls I'm like look I gave myself permission to get this to do that I beat myself up and down the block I was scared but I think as women we're so hard on other women we're so hard on ourselves and we need to just give ourselves permission to do what we got to do there's a bunch of gals in my group that have had facelifts recently and they're happy as can be and had they worked on their skin first yeah their skin was in great shape they're healing wonderfully this is not all for naught this is what we need to do if we want to look good and you tell me all the all the beauty youtubers they all use LED some of them use microcurrent that's the thing you don't do you want to just have mediocre quality skin that looks lackluster and slap a bunch of makeup on it and call it a day then that's great you do you but I wanted really nice looking skin and I've always thought outside of the box and so I have to think about where I've come from you guys remember when I first moved here moved back to Indiana and I was doing oh god I did the skin games it's like 2016 I was broke I got really sick we had to move back to Indiana it's a long story but I was I was broke medical expenses and all the stuff starting from zero and I was working up at the wood house and I was doing videos in that little crappy <laughs> oh my god I've come so far I had gone through it and I, I think me giving myself permission to get my facelift gave everybody else permission that there's no shame that sometimes our anatomies are not so great and sometimes just general aging gets the best of us there are people who age gracefully and don't need it and don't care about it and that's fine that's them and they need to do them and I'm gonna do me and I did it because it was what was right for me and I was scared to death and but I'm so glad I did it because I feel like my chin or my neck would be down to my knees right now had I not done it all right so the next thing let's do a little microcurrent while I continue my rant in between the facelift and not all of us can afford that I mean I certainly couldn't until I was in my 50s I couldn't and if you can't never fear because you know people are looking at your skin so you got a few wrinkles so you got a jowl if that skin over that jowl is beautiful people are gonna notice if it's awful people are gonna notice you know come on anyway it just reminds me of when I first moved back to Indiana I had never had Botox or anything and I was getting ready to do this skin games it was the first year they did it and skin games is this national competition of estheticians and all these different categories and next year I'm going to be a judge it's gonna be in Orlando I hear I'm excited about that and I'm honored that they asked me so the skin games I was all like oh my god I have to get Botox I gotta get filler I gotta do this I gotta do that and so that was the first and only time I had filler in my lips 2016 and that's long gone I kind of liked it though so I got Sculpla God, that was so expensive. They did a round of Kybella underneath my chin, which is that fat dissolving. Oh God, it was painful afterwards. It just burns. It's a fat dissolving liquid that they inject in a grid pattern through here to get rid of this excess fat, submental fat or fat underneath your chin. And don't ever get that done in May. <laughs> it makes you get real swollen as it works the fat out. Oh, it was awful. I had one round of that and I didn't get any retraction or the skin didn't tighten back up afterwards so I was a little miffed about that. <laughs> I feel like it didn't do much and it was very expensive. That was kind of my year of doing all this injectables and crazy stuff to my face in 2016 and then I didn't do anything for a while and then I found fibroblasts in 2018. This is microcurrent by the way. If you're new to the anti-aging scene. I would say LED and microcurrent would be two staples in your aging gracefully arsenal. 
and they add energy to the skin. Microcurrent is a very tiny current that's going to work on the muscles first and then work on the quality of the skin over time. About two weeks to a month out, you start to see that your skin is glowing. It has a, just a nice sheen to it and they call it the microcurrent glow. Yeah, I found fibroblasts in 2018 and that's when things really started to change for me. I really got some good retraction. Um, it takes more than one treatment and some states allow it, some states don't for estheticians, but it's basically where you take this little wand and you heat, you basically use plasma. It's like a little spark and it heats the skin and then you get all scabby and the scabs fall off after about four days. But that's what really shrank up my neck quite a bit and I was the happiest I had ever been with my neck. But you could see the outline of where the fat was and since I had no chin, it still wasn't, it wasn't enough for me. I just wasn't happy. Although it was a good learning experience for me to find out who's a good candidate, who isn't. So if you have very little fat, if you are on the thinner side and have a good jawline, you can get nice results with fibroblasts. Although even heavier people get great results with fibroblasts because we all have excess skin. It's just how, how much will it retract? If there's a layer of fat underneath there, it, it won't retract. And let me tell you guys, I've had clients who have just beaten themselves up and down the block over the submental fat. This happens to everybody. It happens to everybody. I mean, it's this beautiful fat we have up here and then as we age, it just slides down and, and we lose muscle, we lose bone and we lose fat padding in the face and everything kind of slides down. It is not our fault, it is aging's fault. And I just remember, it just broke my heart. I was talking to a client and she was just beating herself up and down the block of, of the state of her neck. And she had really good skin, uh, but once again, she didn't have much of a chin, and that's just aging, right? There are certain face types that age more gracefully than others, and just praise the Lord God if you have a good jawline, because that is half the battle. But yeah, she was, oh, it was heartbreaking. She was just berating herself for her chin and her neck, and I mean, I can relate because I'm sure I did that before I had my surgery. But would I want to live without this even after that, even after surgery? No, <laughs> that's not the way it works. Now, am I as, oh my God, I have to fix this as I was before? No, because I know the limitations, right? This is not a facelift. This, this is not a facelift. Is this maintenance? 100%. Are they both necessary to look as good as, as you want? For some of us, yes. And if you are into natural anti-aging, this is your game, right? This is this is what you do. You know, facelifts, it's, it's major surgery. It's a big deal. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of time off work. It's a lot of hassle. There are complications. I mean, it's not for everybody. It is 100% not for everybody. However, this whole thing about devices not working, of course they're not facelifts but they do things or people wouldn't use them. <laughs> I wouldn't use them. When a clients come in for a facial, they get like little micro facelifts every single time they come in. I'm using four or five, six devices on them. My hands, facial contouring massage, they just get the works. And I think about what they look like if they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> they would not look as good as they do. Don't believe the hype. There's a time and place for everything. You're not gonna ignore your skin until it's time for a facelift and then get the facelift and then never touch your face again. That's ridiculous. And yeah, so, and the two, the two most important, at least for now, I think as far as maintaining healthy skin quality and ease of use, LED and microcurrent. That's where you start, always where you start. Anyway, thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye now.